I'd like to find the road we roam together, swinging along, finding the long way home. We didn't mind the time or place for weather, singing a song, finding the long way home. Remember, I used to sigh at the end of each day, dear. What is happening, house lovers and explorers? Welcome back to another video. And today we are once again going back to the intersection of Port Rush and McGill Road here in Adelaide, where 47 homes and businesses were acquired by the government and demolished to make way for more traffic lanes. In particular, we are taking a look at this once magnificent Federation style gentleman's bungalow, which I will elaborate on with far more details shortly. But let's first take a look back at the homes that were claimed by the widening of Port Rush Road. You can see the proposal plans here and in 2019, the homes and businesses were acquired, leaving the residents unhappy undervalued and with little time to get organized to find a new dream home, which was also during the initial stages of the COVID pandemic. As you can see, some beautiful older places were lost and you genuinely have to feel for those who had to give up their beloved dwellings and then see them reduced to a pile of rubble. The story you are about to hear is true. Only the names of the change. The story you are about to hear is true. Only the names of the change. The story you are about to hear is true. Only the names of the chain. The story you are about to hear is true. Only the names of the chain. The story you are about to hear is true. Only the names of the chain. And now, three years later, even with the completion of the widened road, the land where the homes once sat is still vacant. I will leave the links to the homes already explored in the description. But as mentioned, today we are on the north side of McGill Road, as right here on the corner was the huge and grand old gentleman's bungalow. At the time of the government acquisition, this property was Cozy Kids Childcare Centre, and it was very busy and much loved by the local community. Cozy Kids had only just purchased it, and then spent another seven figures renovating and converting it to become their childcare centre, which opened for operation in 2017. And this also incorporated the 1890s Bluestone Villa next to it, which was formerly another business. The story you are about to hear is true. You are about to hear is true. Only the name of the change. Then only three years later, in September of 2020, it was all gone. Only the name of the change. My research shows that the Grand Old Bungalow was built in 1923 for Dr. R. A. Haste. The property first appears in the old directories in 1925 at a new address of 177 McGill Road, Maylands. Prior to this, only one dwelling at number 175 McGill Road was situated between Adelaide Street and Wellington Road, which is now known as Port Rush Road. Dr. Haste's newly built home was also purposed as a physician clinic where he practiced for at least 50 years, as his name is still present in the last directory copy of 1973. 
and by this stage the address had become 255 McGill Road with the addition of many more homes and businesses. And thanks to Jeff in the comments of my Facebook post on this place, I can confirm that Dr. Hayes practiced and lived here up until the mid 70s, where the property was then taken over by Brown Falconer Architects, right up until Cozy Kids took over as seen here. Jeff said he was involved with the maintenance of the site as his building company rented the old villa at 217 Port Rush Road. Cheers for the info, Jeff. So I just want to make mention of this former home that was next door at number 175 McGill Road, which as I said was the original first home between Adelaide Street and Wellington Road. These are the only images of the old place from 2009 Google Street images. And while I was looking uh, back through the directories, I noticed the name of T.E. Dean at this address for many years. So I looked back and found out that the home was built around 1884 and that Thomas E. Dean was first listed there in 1890 as a labourer and then as a plumber and gas fitter right up until 1946 when he passed away. His wife, Mrs. G. F. Dean, continued to live there up until 1963 when she passed away. The old home was demolished in 2013. No doubt the Deans were well acquainted with Dr. Haste, being close neighbours from 1923 onwards. Hearing about the pending destruction along this strip, I was determined to try and document the properties for posterity, and in September of that year, Cozy Kids was one of the first ones to meet its fate. So let's get into the exploring guys. The initial explore was done during dusk, but I was able to follow up a few days later and get some better shots of the last remnants of the old home's interiors. Just bear in mind guys that the old home had totally been transformed on the inside, including the Bluestone Villa next door, which you will also see. Now I have to give a big shout out to fellow Urbexer, ADL Urbex, who I bumped into while doing my intro to this place. He was already in there doing his explore, taking his photographs. So we ended up teaming up and uh, walking around exploring this place together. And I've left his Instagram link in the description. So go and check out his Urbex pics from around Adelaide, guys. All right, let's get into it. There are another couple of old neighboring properties in this video at the end. So I hope you all enjoy. Cheers. What's happening, explorers? All right, for local people in Adelaide, uh, this is Cozy Kids. We're on the inter intersection of McGill and Port Rush Road. It's gonna be that huge upgrade to the intersection. Um, I just swung past, noticed that they've taken the fence down, they've got the demo fence up, but the place is accessible. And I also bumped into ADL Urbex, not going to show his face, but we're going to cruise around together and check this place out. So let's go. This is the actual daycare for the children's area right now. Um, yeah, ADL Urbex informs me that the old Bluestone Villa which is where I had the camera that's open too so we'll check that out as well I'm kind of puffing because I uh, almost jogged around the corner from where my car's parked yeah. <laughs> yeah so this this is the daycare centre isn't it for the kids yeah. the boys. Um, I'm not sure what kind of age groups they catered to but in the back rooms there's lots of cots Yep. Which I found interesting. Sweet. Now, as you saw from the front in the intro, this is a, a, an, an enormous old bungalow. And it was probably originally built around 1920. I can probably find more info on that, but... Probably not much left of the original state other than that fireplace I just saw there. It's kind of getting dark, so... We'll cruise through at a reasonable pace. Yeah, have had you been checking this place a fair bit lately? I have. Yeah, me Not too. I've been keeping past. been keeping an eye on it. Like every two weeks. Yeah. No, just the temperatures. So. 
made my move. There is a lot of stuff left behind, especially in that room. Yeah. And next to the reception is a room full of toys. Awesome. You'll have to see you later. Yeah, I had just started my intro and uh, I looked around the corner and I saw ADL Ubex and we're like, oh, man. <laughs> then we both we realised we're here for the same reason. Oh, yeah, check it out. Get through. There's probably all kitty locks on these things. There we go. Oh, this is look at all the little kitty yeah. uh, toilets. According to the news, Jersey Kids spent 1.1 million renovating this place, and then about maybe a couple months later, they got told that they have to move out for demolition. Yeah, that sucks. It's like um, this building is kind of back off the road too. They could. They could have almost avoided it if they really wanted to. They could. I mean, they've got a decent portion of front yard space. Yeah. So they could sacrifice that and keep the building, but apparently not. Because when I looked at the plan, it kind of looked like they were going to avoid it, but then I noticed that they're pre prepping this place for demo. So yeah. check out all the kids' trikes, tricycles. Little ovens. Hopefully all this stuff gets repurposed. I'm sure it will. Yeah. I'll put a link to ADL Urbex's um, accounts in the description too guys so you can check him out. Yeah. There's a little police trike. <laughs> Look at these little booths. Are they booths? They like they, they yeah, sit in there, little... sit in there or something? I don't know. Look like little seats. Interesting little place. Hmm. Yeah, we've both been kind of keeping an eye on this place and tonight's the night, this evening. It's, it's around six o'clock now, so it's, it's going to get dark pretty quickly. But you're... Make use of your light. I didn't bring my torch, so... <laughs> yeah, I've got an extra battery in here too, so we should be fine for light. <clears throat> so, yeah... The cots. Is that open? Yeah, Yep. I haven't come across a single locked door so far. Yeah, so there's not there's, there's nothing really left of the original interiors of what would have been an awesome old bungalow, but that was to be expected really. So you've already been through this section, have you? Yeah, this is where I got into that. Oh, did you? Yep. More little toilets and basins. The vent, vent system. Huh. So yeah, all you locals to Adelaide, you'll know where this place is. And that front fence, sorry about the breeze. That front, front fence is really high. There was no chance of really scaling it without looking totally suspicious. <laughs> Someone, someone's had a crack at getting through there. That just looks like a a holding pen. Yeah, they're all too <laughs> Holding pen. I spent a fair bit of 
fair bit of money doing all this. Yeah, and as you said, they, <laughs> they'll be spewing. There's, a, there's another one out at... Um, there's another cosy kid somewhere too, isn't there? Oh, yes. Up in... Um, towards Ross Trevor. Yeah. I believe. I'm not sure if that's where the people here have relocated to, but... Yeah, they do have a second establishment. This room. Oh, wow. Have a look at Let's everything. check it out. This is just, like, sad. Check out all the toys. They've kind of just been thrown in here, but surely um, someone's going to save these, eh? I reckon, yeah. No, these wouldn't get left. A lot of them are just the, the old, uh, classic old wooden ones too, which is good. Hmm. Yeah. You want to take one? Sure. I'll get I've out of the way. I've got a fish way. eye, so it's hard to get you out of it. Oh, hang on. <laughs> there you go. Like that. Oh, my finger's in it. It's so wide. There we go. That's a brilliant shot. Yeah. You just let me know whenever, wherever you want me to point the light. A little bit chalk as well. And paint. I could use some paint. All right, let's continue. I've just got to be a little bit careful through this side area because the windows point right out to the road. But this looks like the front foyer. Yeah, this location is hard to get during the day because the workmen are here seven days a week from what I've noticed. Yep. Have you noticed the same yep. thing? Um, the guys only left about 20 minutes ago. Yeah, yep. it was the same last Sunday as well. might have one of the old fireplaces here. It smells so new. Yeah. All the paint's just fresh as. Yeah. In fact, there are paint buckets thrown around outside. Here we've got, um, you've still got the original old Federation bungalow door trims there. But that's about all that's left of <coughs> the original stuff. Cheers. That light does the trick. Yeah, I think it even goes brighter. I can change it like the temperature on it. So it's oh, a bit warmer. Oh, nice, yeah. <laughs> you can do lots of stuff with that. Yeah. So this just looks like more, more little toilets, a few kid mobiles up there. Oops. I think we're all right here. This is where the high fence is. See that big old gum tree and pine tree will be cut down too, unfortunately. Yeah, so,
And there's one more little room here with some more cots in it. That gum tree I was just trying to talk about, that will get knocked, knocked cut, cut down I should say, <clears throat> which is a shame. I'm just get out here. Yeah, well. Still got the bay window. All right, well, we might go over to the other one, the old Bluestone Villa. So as I mentioned, there's not too many reminders inside of the old home, but they did leave some, as you can see here. And it does seem that all the toys and other things that we saw were removed and reused or rehomed elsewhere, which is good. All right. All right, we're gonna go over to the villa, the old bluestone one. <laughs> yeah, there's a door open right there. Yeah, there's high chances. Yep, there we go. They've taken all the uh, door trims. But this this villa was also a business, so it's going to be far from any original condition it, it was. It's part of the um, cozy kids. Yeah, it's part of the cozy kids as well. So. Fruit and vegetables introduction. That's just lino over cement. Yeah, beautiful building from outside, but Totally converted to childcare again <coughs> inside. I would say all the mantles have gone. Yep. Yep. Now I'll just turn my light down, just so I can show you the stained glass that's still left there. It's the salvage process started. All the door frames, window frames, mantles, you know the deal guys. Oh, they've still got the pressed tin roof. There. That's still original. Sorry I can't use too much light now, because we're right on the roadside. This is interesting, they've blocked off the original hallway by the Oh, yes, they have blocked off the old Victorian archway. It's kind of hard to see because it's all black. It's 
compressed tin as well. More stained glass. How good does that look? That's lit by the street lights from the road. <laughs> the big spotlights, bro. No. <laughs> this is probably the staff room. There's a little kitchen in here. just want to show you that's the bay window that you can see from the front beautiful old bay window all right Another bathroom and my toilet cubicles for the kids. Mm. Is that door open? Yep. I, rem I remember those things from school, the old water taps, water fountains. Looks like this little play playground area out here. Alright, that's pretty much it for the buildings. So, I'll go back in here and wrap it up. But yeah, yeah, got yeah, this whole um, site was daycare, childcare, and all Adelaide people most likely have seen this in the news about the upgrade of the intersection. So it was good to get it on film, even though there's some salvage process going on. Cool explore. Jump in the comments if you want to, and we'll cruise on to the next one. And we'll see you in the next video. What's happening guys? Alright, I'm back at the McGill Port Rush Road intersection. Gonna document some of uh, some more of these homes that are gonna be demolished for the upgrade of this inter intersection. Now I'll just show you over this fence. That whole area was where Cozy Kids was filmed that one night and there was a big bluestone villa that was a business right where that uh, machine is so this whole area is fenced off uh, the same night I filmed cozy kids that was when I bumped into ADL urbex and we um, we came over here for a quick look but it was dark there's a cool um, upstairs and in-ground pool in that area, so check that out. This place is locked up. And it was a business of some sort, so... This section here looks to have been an old... maybe an old Art Deco flat converted to businesses. And one of them was Peak Fitness. Peak... F sorry, Peak Physique.
bathroom in there. And the treadmill. That's a cross trainer. Well, this looks like the Pilates area. through this way, that door's open. Yeah, there's definitely multiple businesses in this little, little precinct. What's that? That's oh, another bathroom. Rationale, electric, something to do with electrics. Now this little area here, where this bar is, tells me it was formerly a home. And there's a stair case that goes up to the top there and looks over into the in-ground pool over there but check this out seems to be seems to be from around the, th the sorry the 50s or 60s that's all bottles beer bottles that have been placed in there another office and that was in that's where the studio was, we were just in behind that door. But we'll go up here for a look. All those properties over there going down the road. That's where the uh, Crazy Kids was, which was that a uh, huge bungalow originally. And that's where the villa was down there, the Bluestone one. But the Ingrand Pool is down there, which we'll go down and have a look at. And there's a whole bunch of other little sheds and things at the back as well. Now they're, they're just offices again. So originally this was a house, pretty cool house, with the pool. Check out this table. Yeah, I'm just going to document as many of these places and then just figure out which ones are worth uploading.
There's a little bit of a maze through here. There's all these little back sheds. That's a cactus. Huge cactus. Another garden shed. I don't think there's too much worth seeing here. Maybe it was used as a smoking area for the businesses at one point. Who knows? Probably can go out this gate. back to the start again. Now there's that building we started at which is not open. All right on to the next ones. Yeah this is the uh, neighboring one to where we just were. This looks to be an old Federation bungalow. Sorry about the traffic noise. And this definitely looks like it was a business as well. This is immaculate inside. That, biz uh, that door screams business. Looks like this one's been freshly... Wow, look at the flooring. And that grill work. Yeah, I would date this around 1920. Still definitely got the Federation influences and it's just before they these bungalows became more Californian the full full-on Californian style but this has had fresh paint the flooring is really polished as well I don't think there's going to be much to see. It's a nice old fireplace still. Original ceilings with those cross beams. Fireplaces in every room. Okay, maybe maybe that was the original floor there. Kitchen. We'll come back into the kitchen. Oh, 
I think they have, yeah you can tell right there, they've taken that wall out. This would have been two rooms. I've taken the dividing wall out. And must be a bathroom. Yeah, and a shower there. definitely very sterile now, very white, plain, sterile looking. And we've got a laundry. It's a very low door. Alright, that looks to be it. Take a squeeze out the back. There's an old there's an old kitchen uh, cabinet. Another old trough over there. That would have been where the water tank is was. It's definitely commercial car parking there with the gravel. All right, guys, let's go and see what else we can find. Cheers for watching. See you in the next one. All right, guys and gals, that is it for this video. I hope you all enjoyed. Uh, I hope you enjoyed the little bits of history that were uncovered for these places. For all the locals of Adelaide um, who are familiar with this area, jump in the comments and whoever else wants to comment. I'm interested to see your thoughts about the uh, upgrade of the intersection and uh, the loss of the old homes. There are a couple of other homes from the other side of McGill Road that I will post at some point. I've got some pretty big documentary style ones on the way, but stay tuned for them guys. On to the next one. Thanks for watching. All right guys, cheers. Bye. Remember I used to sigh at the end of each day. Dear.